Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I got interesting probability problem from one of my subscribers and he is a problem in human meiosis. What is the probability of having a gamete with 12 paternal chromosomes and 11 maternal chromosomes? Today I am going to show you how to solve this type of problems with Pascal's triangle. I can show you straightforward uh, solution. It's going to take me less than one minute, but I want you deeply understand this type of problems, so it's going to take much longer. But later you would be able to solve this type of problems under one minute. In every single cell of our organism we have 23 pairs of the chromosomes and for the introduction let's imagine that we have only one pair of chromosomes. So this is going to be chromosome number one and one we got from the father side and another one we got from the mother side. So just one pair of chromosomes and say this is just chromosome number one. How many different variants of the gametes we can produce? First variant would be one chromosome inherited from the father side. Another variant would be one chromosome inherited from the mother side. So this is going to be a gamete. Gamete is going to be haploid and would have half the number of the chromosomes. Here is just choice of uh, two variants, whether it's going to be paternal chromosome in a gamete or maternal chromosome in a gamete. Say so this is, can be whether egg cell or sperm cell. But uh, now let's take a look what's going to happen if you'll we'll have two pairs of chromosomes. So here's a chromosome number two. Again, one chromosome would be from the father side, another chromosome would be from the mother side. So now our organism has four chromosomes. Two chromosomes in each pair would be almost identical and we call them homologous chromosomes. But from each pair only one chromosome we can find in the gamete. Again, gamete is a sperm cell or egg cell. Just by random chance only, in a gamete we may get a chromosome which is paternal and another chromosome which is also paternal. Another combination would be if in a gamete chromosome number one would be maternal and chromosome number two also would be maternal. Another combination would be if chromosome number one would be paternal and chromosome number two would be maternally inherited. And another combination would be when first chromosome, chromosome number one would be maternally inherited and chromosome number two would be paternally inherited. So this is gamete number one, number two, number three and number four. So with a model with two chromosomes, we jumped from two variants of the gametes to four variants of the gametes. What is going to happen if we are going to have three chromosomes? Again, each chromosome would be inherited from father side and mother side. So basically with each pair of chromosomes we have to multiply by two our number of different combinations of the gametes and with three pairs of the chromosomes so if organism would have total number six chromosomes three pairs of chromosomes again this would cause doubling of different combinations of the chromosomes in the gametes so with three pairs of chromosomes number of the gametes would be eight so now we can easily predict number of different gametes knowing number of chromosomes. For example, with four chromosomes, again, we have just to multiply by two, and this is going to be 16 different combinations. Now let me explain how to build Pascal's triangle and how to solve using Pascal's triangle this type of problems. So first goes row zero, and we have here one. Then goes row one, and we have one and one on the side. So far logic is simple. In the row number two we again have one 
on the sides, but next numbers here uh, would be made as follows. So here in the middle, I put a number that is combination of these two numbers. So one plus one is going to be two. In the row number three, again, backbone would be the same. We start with one and then we just have to combine two numbers in the top row. And this is going to be this time three. Next would be again, combination of these two numbers, which is going to be three. And the backbone is going to be the same one. So also here is just combination of the numbers in the top row. And in the row number four, again, backbone is going to be the same one, then would be combination of these two numbers. So it's going to be four, then combination of these two numbers going to be six. Combination of these two numbers is going to be four again, and backbone is one. Now you see the principle how Pascal's triangle is built. Another hint would be that if we combine all the numbers in each row, we're also going to have certain pattern. Take a look, in the row zero, it's going to be one. In, in the row one, one plus one is going to be two. In the row two, one plus two plus one is going to be four. One plus three plus three plus one is going to be eight. And now you already see the pattern. Even without com combining all these numbers, we can say that number here is going to be twice bigger than this number because this number is twice bigger than this number and this number is twice bigger than this. So you see the pattern. So we can put here 16 even without adding all these numbers. If you want, you can add, you're going to get 16. How else we can represent these numbers? Take a look. What is one? One is going to be two in the power of zero. So the zero comes here. And uh, for example, in the next row, this two would be two in the power of one. And four is a two in the power of two. Eight is a two in the power of three. And 16 is a two in the power of four. So this number four correlates with power four here. Row number three correlates with power three here. Row number two correlates with power two here. Row number one correlates with power one here. And row zero correlates with power zero here. Now let me explain how we can use Pascal's triangle in order to solve this problem. For example, take a look. If we would have only one pair of chromosomes, we would have only two variants of the gametes. So this number one represent one pair of chromosomes. And this one represent one variant of the gamete. And this one represent one combination of the second gamete. So basically two variants only. So two variants. If we have two pair of chromosomes, we are going to have four combinations. Take a look. Two pair of chromosomes would give us one combination of two paternally inherited chromosomes. This one here represents one combination of two maternally inherited chromosomes. And these two represent two combinations where one chromosome would be inherited from the father side, another from the mother side, and one combination when one chromosome would be inherited from the mother side, another from the father side. So we have two such variants. And total number of variants four. So this four stands for the total number of variants. If we have three pairs of chromosomes, we will have one combination when all chromosomes would be paternally inherited, one combination when all three chromosomes in the gametes would be maternally inherited, and three combinations when one chromosome would be paternally inherited and two would be maternally inherited. And three combinations 
when two chromosomes would be maternally inherited and one would be paternally inherited. And total number of combinations would be 8. Now possible questions. For example, what is the probability that all three chromosomes would be paternally inherited? And the answer would be 1 out of 8 combinations. So 1 8. What is the probability that all three chromosomes would be maternally inherited? And the answer would be 1 out of 8. Another question, which Pascal Strangle answer, what is the probability that one chromosome would be paternally inherited and two maternally? Probability is three out of eight. And the last question, what is the probability that two chromosomes would be maternally inherited and one paternally inherited? Three out of eight. If we combine all these probabilities, one eighth plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 1 eighths, we are going to get 8 over 8. Or 8 divided by 8 would be 1 or 100%. So all these combinations represent 100% of all possible combinations, how we can get gametes in a model with three pairs of chromosomes. Now I think you should be ready to see this Pascal's triangle. One more time, the row on the top is the row zero. Next row is number one and next row is number two. Now I want you to show one more secret of the Pascal's triangle. Take a look. I just draw a line along all these numbers. So 14, 17, 19, 20, 22, 23. In the reference to our problem, these numbers represent chromosomic pairs. Now, what all these numbers in the row number 23 represent? It solves actually our problem. For example, this number 1 represents number of variants, how we can get all 23 chromosomes to be paternally inherited. So only one such combination is possible when all chromosomes are paternally inherited. And this one here represents probability or only one combination that is possible that all chromosomes would be maternally inherited. What this 23 stands for? 23 possible combinations exist when 22 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and one would be maternally inherited. This 23 also stands for the 23 combinations when 22 variants would be maternally inherited and one chromosome would be paternally inherited. One more time. So this one represents probability that 23 chromosomes would be paternally inherited. And this 23 represents number of combinations that 22 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and one would be maternally inherited. And this number of combinations stand for 21 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and two would be maternally inherited. So let me move a little bit up. This number here stands for the probability that 20 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and three would be maternally inherited. And this number here stands for the probability that 19 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 4 would be maternally inherited. This number here stands for the probability that 18 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 5 would be maternally inherited. This number here stands for the probability that 17 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and six chromosomes would be maternally inherited. And this number here stands for the probability that 16 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and seven would be maternally inherited. This number here stands for the probability that 15 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and eight would be maternally inherited. And this number here stand for the probability that 14 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 9 chromosomes would be 
maternally inherited. And this number here stands for the probability that 13 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 10 chromosomes would be maternally inherited. And this number here stands for the probability that 12 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 11 chromosomes would be maternally inherited. And this is exactly the question of our problem. What is the probability that 12 chromosomes would be paternally inherited and 11 chromosomes would be maternally inherited? So 1,352,078 different combinations exist. How gamete may get um, 12 paternal chromosomes and 11 maternal chromosomes. But this is yet not going to be our answer. We have also to find number of combinations which are possible and we can add all these numbers. It's going to be time consuming and it is easy to make a mistake. There is much easier way. As you remember, as I told you, the 23rd row would have two in the power of 23 combinations. So, so we are going to get eight, three, eight, eight, six, zero, eight. This is going to be a number of combinations if we combine all these numbers in this row. So our last step would be to divide this number, number of combinations, how we can get 12 paternal chromosomes and 11 maternal chromosomes. So we have to put this number in numerator and it's going to be 13, 52, 0, 78 divided by total number of all combinations possible. So the answer is going to be 0 0.16. This is rounded number and if you need an answer in percentage form, you have to multiply by 100 and the answer is going to be 16%. Some of you may say this calculation took so long, but actually everything you have to do, you just have to find Pascal's triangle. You have to go to row 23 and just find probability of having 12 paternal and 11 maternal combinations and divide this number of combinations by total number of combinations. It should not take you more than a couple minutes. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.